Church. I said last Sunday, no matter what, 
we would be here this week in the power and presence of God, and that is certainly true. We remain in the body of Christ. But we are suspending our Sunday in-person gatherings for the time being. We do want to be mindful of the stresses that our healthcare workers and other essential service providers are under as we do have high COVID cases in our area. We want to do all that we can to support them and to care for one another. We're sad that we can't see you in person today, but we know we are not alone. We remain together in the body of Christ. Our recovery at Bristol program continues with both live stream and in person on Thursday night. And we are blessed to have Reverend Steve Patterson step into the role of interim associate pastor for recovery ministry while Reverend Roy Hall is on medical leave. Reverend Patterson teaches in the social work department at ETSU and he believes very strongly in the power of recovery. You might want to tune in on Thursdays as a midweek opportunity and as a chance to get to know Steve and this important ministry. As folks in recovery often say, we are all, really all of us are recovering from something so that connection can be good for all of us. If you do want to stay up on our church news as we continue to monitor the situation and make our adjustments, you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and our email list. This newsletter comes out each Wednesday. You can get signed up on our website or by reaching out to our church office. Let us pray. Eternal God, you are our hope and our salvation. For in Jesus Christ, you have conquered death. Baptized in him, we are raised to new life. Increase in us our faith and keep us watchful, that we may welcome Christ with joy when he comes to set the whole world free. In his name we pray. Amen.
Our country has been ravaged by a lot during these days, and the pandemic has just been one part of it. These are times that have been trying to all of our souls. No matter what happened with the election, I knew that I wanted to have a prayer for our country today. No matter our perspective, no matter if we are happy or sad or anxious or angry or optimistic or cynical, we all share in this general sense of discomfort and unease. Because we are not all of one mind or one opinion, we are a divided nation. And there is nothing about an election that can clear that up or fix that for any of us. We need a greater power. We need a greater vision. We need a greater possibility. We need a force beyond ourselves. We stand on faith. Faith in God who created each and every single one of us. Faith in God who loved us enough to send his son to lay it all on the line for us. Faith in God who calls us to love one another with the same kind of love we have been shown, we have been given. Perhaps it is appropriate that this week brings Veterans Day, a time when we are invited to pause, to be mindful of those who have been willing to serve something greater than themselves at great cost to themselves and to their families. So for the prayer I'm offering today, I have looked to a daily devotional called Strength for Service to God and Country. It was put together as an Eagle Scout project and our United Methodist men across the world have been instrumental in helping to get it in the hands of those who serve and sacrifice for others. Our own Bob Greeson shared his copy with me and I will be lifting prayers, this prayer based on some of those reflections. So let us pray. O oh, holy God, may we begin this day of life and all days we are given as in your presence. In all our ways, may we acknowledge you, direct our paths, keep us ever true to you, increase our faith, guide us in every thought and word and act. Prepare us that we may be ready to meet each trial and temptation that may come to us and make us worthy of your protecting care. As you have led men and women of the past through darkness to light, through despair to hope, through tragedy to triumph, we place our confidence in you, sure that as always, you will keep that which we commit unto you. May we have a living faith in you, which will enable us not only to endure injuries and disappointments, but to transform them into treasured experiences. Do not take from us the irritating conditions surrounding us until we have learned all we can from them. Although now we may be a people in conflict, you know that we would rather be people of peace. Help us to learn those principles upon which a lasting peace may be built. Help us to learn to love one another. Help us to walk in the footsteps of our unity-loving Prince of Peace. And we just take some time for quiet prayer where each one of us can lay our hearts before you. We offer our prayers in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We do stand on the foundations of our faith. And I invite us to join together as we affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us say together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are working to make a difference, especially during these COVID days. And there are many ways that you can participate in the ministries here at State Street. You can make an offering by texting GIVE to 276-218-8100. You can mail in a check to the church office or there is a giving portal that's available on our website. Let us pray. Gracious God, receive our gifts tokens of thanks for your extravagant blessings. 
and signs of our trust in your coming reign of justice, peace, and love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
our praise band and our choir members for these past several weeks. They have been working together to bring our worship offering as one service in one body. And next Sunday, we are going to move to offering two services on Sunday mornings uh, that will both be live streamed. We will have our 9 o'clock service that will feature our 901 praise band. And then we will have our 11 o'clock service, which will feature our organ and piano and choral pieces and offerings. There are many ways that we worship. There are many ways that we can share together in this time when we especially need to remember God's presence with us. I invite you to hear these words from Romans chapter 8. I'll be reading selected verses from uh, 8 verses 18 through 39. Hear the word of God. Paul says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the Spirit, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I received the call in the middle of the night while I was a chaplain at Grady Hospital in Atlanta. I was being summoned to the labor and delivery area where I arrived to find a young woman who was sobbing. She had just found out that the child in her womb, the child she had been carrying for more than seven and a half months, was dead. Not only was she having to face that grief and loss, but she was also in the middle of labor, racked with that pain as well. 
and she was going to have to continue with that labor. She was going to have give going to have to give birth to a child who was going to emerge from her womb not living. I don't have children of my own. David and I married at a pretty late age. And I've sometimes wondered if that was God's design because I've always had this kind of fear of childbirth. I have no idea where that comes from, but as I sat with this woman, I really, I really couldn't think of anything much worse than what she was going through. Having to go through this pain and agony of labor without the joy that we usually experience with the birth of a child. And it was a moment when I felt pretty useless as a chaplain. What did I possibly have to offer to her? There were no words. There were no magic answers. There was nothing I could do to help her make sense of things. Reverend Jim Harnish in his resource, Making, Make a Difference, finding, Following Your Passion and Finding Your Place to Serve. Reverend Harnish says there are times when words don't work, when tragedy strikes, when violence erupts, when injustice wins, when pain becomes palpable or disappointment closes in like a thick fog around you, it may leave you at a loss for words. What can we say? What can we do? And yet, these places of vulnerability, these areas of pain, these moments when we don't have the answers, can also be the very moments when God's presence becomes most clear and vivid to us. John Bunyan in his book, Pilgrim's Progress says, the best prayers often have more groans than words. Our groaning moments can be the moments when we realize how much we need God. Those can be the moments when we connect most closely with God. And as people of faith, those are the moments when we may find God is seeking to show us most vividly and powerfully the way and the peace of Christ. I experienced God's presence and power in a very vivid and real way that night at the hospital. God's presence was made real in our groaning with one another. We were very much in that experience that Paul is speaking of in this passage from Romans. We know that the whole world has been groaning with labor pains until now. We had no words but we held on to each other. Not only me and the woman, but the nurse and the doctor and others who were gathered around and we cried out together in our prayers. And we found a sense of solidarity and somehow we found a sense of hope. Our need for God was made very real and we felt God's presence joining with us, giving us courage to face the pain with one another. Reverend Peter Story, a United Methodist pastor from South Africa, was a powerful witness during apartheid and the reconciliation and rebuilding time that followed. He once said, if, if you want to know whether God is alive, you must go not to where all is well, but into places of brokenness and of suffering. There are depths of reality. There are dimensions of God, releases of healing energy that flow into the world only through the power of faithful suffering. 
I don't know why this should be a surprise to us as people of faith. Because that's also the image of God that is most pertinent and powerful in our understanding of God. Our God is a suffering God. We speak of Jesus Christ, our Savior, as the incarnation of God. God made flesh and blood. God who chooses to enter fully into human suffering and pain. And this is not for the purpose of just suffering, for suffering's sake. No, it's God entering fully into our suffering and pain to bring the promise of redemption. Through God, our suffering can be transformed. God can bring hope even in the midst of suffering. Paul puts it this way. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. When we are most lost is often when we are most able to be found. Because God meets us there. And when we remember God's presence, that means hope is always present as well. The thing about God is, which we should also remember, is that this incarnational presence, this powerful force, can bring hope into every moment of darkness. Is offered not just so we can each experience personal redemption and transformation. It's not just about our own salvation. There is more. Those whom Jesus heals and brings strength to are called to follow. Jesus puts it, take up your cross and follow me. Those whom Jesus heal become his disciples. Their transformation leads them to want to share that good news, to bring that witness to others who are in pain. And it is often in reaching out to others in their pain and in offering God's presence and power where disciples experience the joy, the promise of salvation in new ways for themselves as well. I experienced a glimpse of that kind of redemptive power last week, the kind of power that can come from entering into the pain of suffering and receiving the joys of sharing in God's redemptive work in the world. Last week, I got to make a phone call on your behalf. The father of three of our Fish Club youth died somewhat suddenly a few weeks ago. He had been dealing with cancer, but his death came in the form of a sudden and massive stroke. This father was the breadwinner for his family, so these three Young adults and his wife were facing not only their grief, but also the financial challenges that loomed. And in the midst of all of those challenges, what was bothering the mother, the wife, was that she had not been able to come up with the money to pay for the the funeral home for her husband's cremation. And it was agonizing to her that she could not follow through with that and she was waiting. She had to wait. And she had reached out very energetically and vigorously to all the resources that she knew. She'd set up a GoFundMe page, but there still was a little over $600 that remained. And she'd run out of places to go. And this is where you stepped in. Our Fish Club folks came together and our serve team came together and they agreed to 
pay that remaining amount, pulling from resources provided by State Street through your gifts and generosity and through the blessings of our missionary emergency fund that we reap the blessings from each year. And so I met, first made a phone call to the funeral home to pay that bill. And then I got to call this mother, this wife, and as soon as I told her the news that the balance on what she owed was zero, she burst into tears. She was so grateful with joy, and we spent some time just sobbing together. In getting to share in that moment, in getting to be part of being the hands and feet of Jesus for her, I found my own redemption as well. Right before that call, I was pretty caught up in my own kind of pity party, thinking about all the tasks before me, caught up in my own stuff. But when I got out of my world and I connected with hers, I saw Jesus. I experienced joy, a powerful joy in the midst of that deep pain. Now we have all kinds of reasons to groan right now. We probably all need to just share in some groaning time sometimes, and that's okay. There's a lot to groan about. If we started to make a list, we'd, we'd run out of words. Yes, these are days of suffering and pain. But that means because of our faith, we're in the face of possibilities for redemption as well. We are at the very place in the very time where we might just connect more deeply than we have ever connected with God's redemptive power. Because right now, we know we don't have the answers. And we probably get ourselves most messed up when we think we do. We need to get out of ourselves and get with God. As people of faith, we know God is seeking every moment to redeem us. Every moment. We are more than conquerors in Christ. That is the power on which we stand. Let us pray. Holy God, we lay before you our hearts, our souls, our groans. You know them all. And you also know that you want to bring us redemption, hope, every moment as well. Help us to follow your call to enter fully into places of suffering and pain, knowing that we bear the witness of your grace and your promises, knowing that nothing can separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We walk in that grace. We walk in your faithfulness. Amen.
It's always good to share together in the body of Christ, to remember we are not alone. And I do remind you that next Sunday we will have two worship offerings that will be available live stream. Those services can also be accessed, they can be accessed on our Facebook page and on our website at the time of the services. And then later on Sunday afternoons, you can also access them on State Street's YouTube channel. And we have a, a number where you can also call to receive the sermons by phone. And if you need more information about that, you can call the church office. So next Sunday, two worship offerings at 9 o'clock and at 11 o'clock. However we gather, we gather remembering we are in this together as the body of Christ. And I pray that the Lord may bless you and keep you. I pray that the Lord may make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I pray that the Lord may lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.